So we're headed to where the cheese is made. Yeah, going up to West. Um, look, we made cheese on the site since about 1890. Okay. Like cheddar's been made on the site since 1890. Oh. Um, in the old farmhouse, which you'll see um, in the yard. And, um, uh, and then, like, during the war, they started to expand it because cheddar, you couldn't actually produce any other cheese apart from cheddar. Oh. The, um, uh, the government said, right, all we want is cheddar because of the rationing and stuff. During the war? Yeah. Okay. So, um, we, um, we kind of expanded our production a little bit. We're still making trads. Up until, I think it was around about the, the 1970s, like, um, late 70s, and then we started making block because we were, um, uh, well, the company was um, pulling milk from about 32 different um, farms, and making quite a lot of block, wow. um, so processed yeah. uh, cryovac um, cheese. Um, my father uh, moved down into the farming side of things um, about 40 years ago, um, so he saw that kind of change happen. Um, but he was just on the farming side. He's our little young stuff there. Um, and, um, and then in the early 90s, we had this thing called the Milk Marketing Board in the UK. And that every litre of milk had to go through the Milk Marketing Board. Mm. Um, so um, even if you were going to process it and use it on your own farm, you had to sell it to this body on like on paper, on paper transaction, <laughs> and then um, uh, and then buy it back. Okay. That was really good because um, they could control the price of milk, right. and so um, they almost kind of fixed the price of milk and everything. And, and super, um, but as supermarkets got more and more powerful, um, then. Uh, the supermarkets kind of had a look at that and thought, crumbs, this is, um, and uh, they went to the government and went to the Monopoly and Mergers Committee and said, surely this isn't right. They got involved and said, well, actually, you've got a monopoly on the supply. So that was abolished. And then all the, at this kind of time as well, you were getting um, big, big producers of block cheddar as well. Um, and Dad was taking over the cheese side of things. We, we looked at it and we thought, well, we can't compete with like the mass producers, right. like you know, Barbers Down the Road or mm -hmm. um, Dairy Crest or anyone like that. Yep. Um, because of our site is right on the side of a hill as well, so we can actually expand any bigger. Yeah. Plus, it had, the the buildings had evolved over the years by kind of adding a lean-to on the back of a lean-to on the back of a lean-to. <laughs> so cleaning the place and actually for the efficiency of it, yeah. it was terrible as well. So um, so Dad took the decision to just knock the whole lot down. We knocked it down and then we built a purpose-built um, dairy um, for um, proper trad cheddar production. Mm -hmm. um, so we started making um, the cheddar back in the um, using the original recipe that we were using in 1890. Back in I think it was 97 we started first started making uh, making cheddar, trad cheddar again. So, yeah. yeah. So that's that's the that kind of story behind that. When when you were doing block, was it pasteurized? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And when we first started making uh, trad cheddar again. We've, we made half and half, so we made pasteurised cheddar for a bit and unpasteurised cheddar um, just to see what the market was doing. And then when I, uh, you know, I was a chef up in London for about four years and I've kind of vowed never to come into the family business. <laughs> I was like, no, yeah. like, you know, not, not doing that for that. And then, um, and Dad was having a bit of a struggle with, um, with selling the cheese and stuff. And that was about seven years or so ago. And, um, so I thought I'd come down and see what it was all about. And then we kind of both took the decision that, you know, unpasteurised was where it's at. And that was more interesting, a lot harder yeah. to do, mine. But, um, you know, that's that was where the road we really wanted to go. You know, it's made so much sense to 
if we were going to do this original recipe, then just do the whole hog. Stick to the recipe. Plus, you know, we got, we got, um, we were only using milk from our own herd of cows, so we know exactly where it's coming from. Yep. Exactly what type of, um, you know, what the cows being fed. So, and Dad is like a really good farmer. Yeah. So, um, why not take advantage of, um, of this really beautiful milk, which essentially what cheese making is all about. If you've got amazing milk, you want to try and preserve it for winter. Right. So you, to try and preserve it, you want to preserve all of the flavour mm. and the texture and everything about that milk. So um, to pasteurise it, you're changing structure, you're changing texture, you're, and you're getting rid of all those beautiful kind of flavours, which are your bacteria and things like that. Right. So it just doesn't make sense for us. <laughs>